بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وبارك على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد Alhamdulillah, we reach our next point in uh, the text of the Shalha Sunnah of Baba Hari. And <coughs> inshallah, we'll begin the Arabic. Fadl uh, Adnan. This point here, Fikum, is when the Ashraf Masai, so from the most lofty and noble issues that discuss or that are discussed when it comes to the creed of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, that the believers they see their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and the manner in which they see Allah Azza wa Jal. And no doubt this is a lofty reward in of itself for the believers. And a great virtue in of itself. And Ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions in relation to this affair of the Ru'ya, his Majmu'a Fatah, are the ones that see Allah. It says that there are different aqwal, different statements in relation to it. As to who sees Allah. The first of them is the ru'ya yura al nas jami'ah. And all of the people see Allah. We see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second is that the ru'ya is reserved for the mu'mineen. Reserved for the believers. And the third is that the ru'ya is reserved for kullu man yadhhar al-Islam. Everyone that makes Islam apparent. Then these are the three. And what is the clear distinction between the, the second and the third? What's the difference between the second and the third? The, the Munafik and to the third. Why? Because those that make Islam apparent will be amongst everyone, whether it be the Mu'minin or the Munafik. And so, we'll come to it, but inshallah, that which is apparent is that the stronger of these opinions is the second, is that it's reserved for the believers. That the scene. The one that sees Allah, this is something reserved for the believers. And Shaykh Fuzan, Hafidahullah, he refers to it as this mas'ala being al masail al aqeedah muhim al adhima. That the ru'i of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I seen Allah as a is from the greatest of the masail in the aqeedah. The greatest of Masa'il and Akhidah. Yani ithbat anil mu'mineen yaron rabbahum yawm al qiyamah. Yani that the believers they see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yawm al qiyamah. And they see them with their own eyes. 
كما يقال كما يرون القمر ليلة البدر just as they saw and just as you see the moon on the night of Badr and so this is what is affirmed by way of the ahadith, the narrations as well as the ayat of the individual that sees Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the believer that sees Allah from these ahadith is the hadith of Suhaib found in Sahih Muslim and the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said إِذَا دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ أَهْلُ الْجَنَّةِ إِذَا دَخَلَ أَهْلُ الْجَنَّةِ جَنَّةَ قال يقول الله تبارك وتعالى تريدون شيئا أزيدكم تريدون شيئا أزيدكم and so in when the people of Jannah enter Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will state to them, do you wish for anything that I can I increase for you? Yani Najar. For your kulun Alam Tubyad Wajuhana. Yani wa face is not enlightened and brightened. Alam Tudkila al Jannah. وَتَنَجِّنَا مِنَ النَّارِ Did you not enter us into Jannah? And did you not save us from the hellfire? قَالْ فَيَكْشِفَ الْحِجَابِ فَمَا أُؤْتُوا شَيْئًا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّذْرِ إِرَى رَبِّهِمْ عَزَى اللَّهِ جَانَ And so that's the message of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he stated that then Allah Ta'ala unveils the covering and the believers yani they are not given anything greater than or more beloved to them than this affair of, of their being able to see their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. This hadith in of itself, barakallahu feekum, is azim. When a person ponders upon the affair of the dunya and he ponders upon all of the amour of dunya يعني, anything that he he wished to do or any khusum, any dis- disagreements he comes into or any trials he faces and that's all Allah Ta'ala and thus when a person enters Jannah all of that is forgotten. All of that yeah, it's half it. It, has, it carries no weight. For indeed the person the servant is to see the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala b'ghayr hijab. They see their Lord as Allah Ta'ala Allah Ta'ala the Rabb al-Samawat wal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the heavens and the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that has control of all of the affairs. When you look at it and you compare it and you, and you ponder upon the reality of that, no doubt that is alim, that is something which is great and weighty. And when you compare it to whatever tribulation you face here in the dunya. Or whatever a person feels they have to deal with here in the dunya. Falashay. It's not anything after that. If the person strives to die upon Iman and attain such a reward that Allah Ta'ala knows best. And so, likewise, From the ayat, they indicate this as well. It is saying of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادَ And those that perform good 
they will attain in, re in reward of that, or in place of that good likewise. Al Ziyadah. And something in addition. And it's mentioned in Sahih Muslim that this Ziyadah, this addition, the addition to the blessings, is another. Ila wajhillah tabarakhu ta'ala. And in addition to the blessings is that the individual gets to see and look to their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, we have the statement of Allah tabarakhu ta'ala. Wujuhu yawma ilin nadira ila rabbiha nadira. Yani referring to the believers that their faces on that day will be illuminated and they will look towards their Lord as our Jah. And these ayat, no doubt, are clear indications of this affair of the Ru'iyah. The one that sees Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one that gets to view the Lord as a wajal. Along with that, barakallahu fiku, we have some of the statements of the imma and the salaf in relation to this. From these statements, it's a statement of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. Where he mentions in relation to the formation of ayah, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا الْحُسْنَى وَالزِّيَادَ Abu Bakr Siddiq mentions, or he was asked, he was asked, they kufakalu, yani the people asked him, مَا زِيَادَ يَا خَلِيفَةُ الرَّسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمُ What is this ziyada? What is this thing that is referred to the ziyada of an ayah? O Khalif of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Qal He mentions Another ila wajhi Allahi Tabarakhu Ta'ala He mentioned That this ziyada Is a looking towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Likewise You have the narration of Ali Ibn Abi Talib Ali Ibn Abi Talib he mentions من تمام النعمة دخول الجنة والنظر إلى وجه الله تبارك وتعالى يعني من تمام النعمة دخول الجنة والنظر إلى وجه الله تبارك وتعالى في جنتي and so from the complete blessing and upon the believer is that he will enter Jannah and get to look to his Lord Tabarakwa Ta'ala within his Jannah. Sayyidina Ali Abu Talib. And likewise, you have the narration of Ibn Abbas. Where it was asked to him, Uqil ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, Qul man dakal al jannah yara rabbahu azawajan. Yet is every individual that enters jannah, will they see his Lord azawajan? Qala na'am. He stated yes. This is a narration of ibn Abbas, which is Hassan. And it's not Hassan. Likewise, you have the statements of some of the tabi'in. From some of the tabi'in, the statements of them. You have the statement of Sa'id ibn Musayyib. Sa'id ibn Musayyib. Wal Hassan. Hassan referring to? Hassan al Basri. وابد الرحمن ابن أبي ليلى
وعبد الرحمن بن ثابت وإكرمة ومجاهد وقتادة والسدي وكعب all of them رحمه الله all of them stated in relation as زيادة النظر إلى وجه الله عز وجل all of them نعم from these from amongst the tabi'in mention the exact same thing that is زيادة mention the ayah is another in Allah, in Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala Sa'id ibn Musayyib Hasan al-Basri Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Layl Abdul Rahman ibn Sa'd Iqrima Mujahid Qutada Suddi wa Ka'b all of them must mention Naam this nine those nine mention this exact same affair in relation to this eye. Along with that as well, we have the statement of Obad ibn Awam. And he mentions Qadima Alayna Shariq ibn Abdullah. Shariq ibn Abdullah. Move the Khamsina Sana. فقلت يا أبا عبد الله إن عندنا قوما من المعتزلة ينكرون هذه الأحاديث. and so he mentions that I came upon شريك ابن عبد الله. شريك ابن عبد الله وقال شريك he was a Kufi. And he was from the Shuyukh of Bukhari. From the Shuyukh of Bukhari. So I approached him and I stated, O oh, Abu Abdullah, we have amongst us a people from amongst the Mu'tazila who deny these ahadith. Like the ahadith referring to the Ru'i of Allah. Like the one seeing Allah. The believer seeing Allah. And they will deny the hadith in Allah. Yanzil al samai dunya. That Allah Ta'ala descends to the sama of the dunya. Likewise, they reject the hadith in the Ahl al Jannah. Yaroon al Rabbahum. They reject the hadith that indeed we were Jannah. Indeed we were Jannah. We we'll see the Lord. فحدثني and so he narrated to me about 10 hadith he narrated to me around 10 hadith in relation to this thus he stated عَمَّا نَحْنُ as for us فَقَدْ أَخَوْفْنَا دِينَنَا هَذَا عَنِ التَّابِعِينَ عَنِ أَصْحَابِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم فهم أما نأخذوا He said as for us That we have taken our deen From the tabi'een As well as the companions of the messenger of Allah Sallallahu alayhi wa As for them And he referred to the Mu'tazila Who have they taken their deen from? As for Shariq Ibn Abdullah He mentions this affair that these Mu'tazah, that they deny all of these proofs. However, in reality, when it comes to the Ru'i of Allah, it's something which is thabit, it's something which is affirmed and attested to. And so it cannot now be said that a person has any ability to deny that. Why? Because the etiquette, that creed has been taken from the Tabi'in. He mentioned they took this from the Tabi'in. And then he mentions thus after that that we took this creed and they took their creed from the companions of the Messenger of Allah. 
That's where they took their creed from. So, as for these individual mutations, where do they take their creed from? Now, finally, we have the statement as well, the final statement we'll mention. It's a statement of Malik ibn Anas. Malik ibn Anas. The statement of Malik. Where he mentions, Anas yandurun ila rabbihim azawajal yawm al qiyama. And Malik mentioned that the people, I refer no doubt to the believers, will look at their Lord Yom al Qiyamah with their eyes, like with the naked eye. And of course, this is the etikad of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah in that regard. And so, As for those that are disbelievers, then the reality is, is that they will not see Allah as a wajan. As Allah Ta'ala states, Kalla inhum arrabbihim yawma idhin la mahjubun. Allah Ta'ala states, Nay, rather they will be concealed on that day from their Lord. Yani mahjubun, as Shaykh of Fawzai mentions, and ru'yatillah. They are covered and concealed from seeing Allah. And they will not, their vision will not, will not see Allah Ta'ala. Fin kana al-kufar mahjubun and ru'yatillah, fahada dalil. Ala anna al-mu'mineen yurawun al-rabbahum. And so, if the kufar have been concealed and the kuffar have been covered from seeing their Lord then this is a clear evidence of the opposite what is referred to as mafhum and makhalifa yani what is understood from this ayah is the opposite is true so if it's affirmed that and it's specified that the believers or rather here, the disbelievers will not see Allah. And we understand that the opposite of that is true. And that the believers will see Allah Ta'ala. From the Shubahat, from the doubts that they seek to bring, and the Mutezza seek to bring in relation to this affair, from these doubts, is the statement of Allah to Barakwa Ta'ala, Lan Tarani, and you will not see me. Which is found in Surah Araf, where Allah Ta'ala mentioned, Walamma jaa Musa li miqatina, wa kallamahu rabbuhu, qal, qal rabbi arni anzur ilayk, qal lan tarani, wa lakin unzurna ila jabal, fa nistakarra makana, fa sawfa tarani. Allah Ta'ala mentions and when Musa came to his particular place and took a set time he spoke to his Lord and, sa- and stated I owe my Lord allow me to see you and look towards you Allah Ta'ala stated that you will not see me. Allah Ta'ala states that you will not see me. However, if you look towards the mountain and it remains within its place, and you will see me. And so they will state that this particular ayah is a proof that the person and the believers will not see Allah. And they will use this ayah as a proof to say that they will not see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is it mentioned? Lang Turan. I will not see him. However, what we understand from this is that 
this negation is a negation of the dunya. And you will not see me within the dunya. And so, Sheikh Obedi mentions first and foremost that this menfi, first, the first thing is that this menfi is a menfi in the dunya. And ahwal al nas fil akhira ghayr ahwal fil dunya. And what occurs to them in the akhira is not the same of that which will occur in the dunya. Likewise, this ayah, if you were to say that this ayah is referring to yeah, you're not seeing Allah, then of course, this is something which is general. And the tafsir is mentioned within the ahadith, the, the, the detail mentioned within the ahadith. From the ahadith, that I found within the sunnah, or ahadith, yani, which referred to as sariha, yani, that are clear. I mentioned the affair directly. From those narrations, in the statement of Allah, or statement of the message of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّكُمْ سَتَرَوْنَ رَبَّكُمْ كَمَا تَرَوْنَ هَذَا الْقَمَرِ This is a hadith from Sahih Bukhari. That indeed you will see your Lord just as you see this moon. So no doubt this is affirmation. This is affirmation that the individual no doubt will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, this Len, which is in the ayah, Len Torani, is not the Len of Abad. It's not the Len referring to something which is, yani, inconclusive or complete, completely negated. Naam, that is something that will never happen. Because we know that the narrations mention this. And the ayat mention this, the aforementioned ayat mention this. And rather, as we mentioned, this is something which is referring to the dunya. Likewise, they may mention as well the ayah, the surah to the an'am, لا تدركه الأبصار وهو يدركه الأبصار. That, again, within this ayah, that they will not be able to capture or glance towards him with their eyesight. Whilst he looks towards them, referring to Allah Ta'ala. And what is referred to this, or is understood from this, is that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala idraq and the absar or the basr of Allah the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something which is comprehensive it's comprehensive and he, he sees all that occurs with the mu'mineen all that occurs with the with the khalq rab and so this ayah is not completely negating that the believers will see Allah. Rather, it's negating the nature of the manner in which the creation see. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his basr is comprehensive. He sees all that occurs in the creation. And that which occurs in the creation whether it be from their actions that resides within the or that which resides within the hearts. And again, this is not something which is a negation and does not negate the aforementioned ayat, the aforementioned ahadith, as well as the aforementioned yani, 
uh, narration from the Salaf. And so the reality is that these individuals are the individuals as Allah Ta'ala refers to them. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي كُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ فَيَأْتَبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْهُ بَتِغَاهُ فَيَأْتَبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْهُ بَتِغَاهُ الْفِتْنَةِ وَبَتِغَاهُ تَعْوِيلِ So Allah Ta'ala mentioned the relation of these individuals. And as for the ones that have a deviation within their hearts, the narrow ones that follow that which is unclear or requires a degree of clarity. Seeking by way of that tribulation and seeking by way of way that to distort. And so the mention of that, no doubt, is in relation to these individuals from the Mu'tazila who reject and negate this affair of the Ru'ya and seek to use these ayat as proof of that. Whilst, when it comes to the reality, there are ayat that are clear in relation to this affair. But they cling to those seeking to misinterpret the meaning of the ayat to negate this affair of the ru'ya of Allah. Does it make sense, Ikhwan? As we mentioned, there's ayat that are clear in relation to the ru'ya of Allah. There are ahadith that are clear in relation to the ru'ya of Allah, seeing Allah. But rather than them taking those and acting upon those, they cling to those ayat where they seek to distort his meaning in order to uphold that false creed. And so they seek by way of that to explain particular ayat in a manner that will aid them in their bid'ah, aid them in their deviation. And so thus this is what we understand from that barakallahu fiqh. Thereafter, Uh, Baba Hari, he mentions, Wal Iman bir Ru'ya Yawm al Qiyamah. And so, Iman bir Ru'ya Yawm al Qiyamah, that they believe and they have to have faith in seeing Allah Yawm al Qiyamah. Limada, Limada call Yawm al Qiyamah. Shaykh Fawzani mentioned, poses the question, why is it mentioned Yawm Al-Qiyamah? Why is Baba Hadi mentioned Yawm Al-Qiyamah? لِأَنَّهُ لَا يُرَى جَلْوَ عَلَى فِي الدُّنْيَا Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jal is not seen within the dunya. And thereafter, Baba Hari mentions Jeroen Allah Azza wa Jal Biya'anu li ru'usihim Ya'ani da That they see Allah Azza wa Jal With the eyes Essentially the eyes on their face On their faces The reason why He mentioned if you like He clearly spells it out Which eyes are being referred to Because You will find that individuals Of deviation they will seek to misinterpret this affair of the eyes and refer to it as being the qulub. Naam. And say that, that this affair of seeing Allah meaning it isn't to, to see Allah with the eyes but rather the acceptance of the qulub. The acceptance of the hearts. So they seek to distort this meaning. And so thus, Baba Hari, in his statement, he seeks to, seeks to make it absolutely clear when it refers to the ru'ya. That they will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the naked eye. 
Man, they will see Allah Ta'ala with naked eye. Again, this is why it was important to mention the yani, Aqwal from before. Because we have the clear ayat, we have the ahadith, and we have what the Salaf said in relation to that as well. All of them affirming the Ru'ya of Allah. Now, thereafter, he mentions Muhum, Wahuwa, Yuhasibuhum bila hijab, or bila haj, wala turjama. And so, he brings them to account without any veil, any covering, or with anyone to interpret for them. And this is the affair of Yom Al Qiyamah. This is the reality of Yom Al Qiyamah when it comes to the reckoning. May Allah Ta'ala make it easy for all of us. That Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will not leave an individual from this affair of the reckoning except that everything is brought forth to him. And he's understood. He understood everything that's brought to him. And there's no need for anyone to interpret. Everything is brought forth to him. There's no interpreter between him and between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we understand that the mutarjim is the one that transmits one thing from one language to another. For example, the one that transmits something from English to Arabic. Or the opposite. And there are many languages in Allah Ta'ala knows best. And alhamdulillah, that is the end of the speech of Shaykh Salah Fawzan in relation to this point. And we'll conclude here, inshaAllah Ta'ala. Uh, but in our uh, next lesson, we'll go on to discuss some of the other affairs in relation to Yom Al-Qiyamah. From them, the, the, the wazn or the mizan as well as the hold and the likes of that Allah Ta'ala A'lam Zakam Maqira Wa Baraka Allah Fikum Wa Sallallahu Wa Baraka Ala Nabiyina Muhammad Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallam